Hey there, and welcome to the Home Church YouTube channel. My name's Kenny, and I'm the lead pastor right here at Home Church based out of Denver, North Carolina. We're excited that you chose to join us for today's message, and I believe that God is gonna use today's word to challenge and encourage you in your walk with Jesus. But listen, wherever you're watching from all across this world, we invite you to join us by subscribing to this channel so that you get the freshest content that we produce every single week. But also, if you'd like to partner with this ministry, we'd invite you to do that as well. Visit our website at myhomechurch.cc backslash give to partner with us. We pray that God uses this message to challenge you today and to bless you as you hear the teaching of God's word. Awesome. Well, hey, good morning and welcome to Home Church. Uh, my name's Kenny. I have the honor of serving as the lead pastor here. We're glad you're here uh, today. And so um, I talk about my children a lot. They make for really good sermon fodder. Um, and one day they're going to look back on it and uh, we'll probably have to delete some of these things. But, um, you know, my children love to spend money. Now, to be clear, they like to spend my money, all right? Uh, and, and so here's the, here's the thing with, with that is my kids are constantly wanting something new, right? So uh, they might have just gotten a, a new video game or they might have had just gotten a new stuffy. But if we go to a store, inevitably, they're going to want something, right? They just are. Uh, and and here's, here's how this looks, because you guys have seen this, not just with my kids. Um, but my kids have no real sense of... Uh, of money. They have, uh, they have piggy banks that are full. Uh, they might have more money in their piggy bank than I do today. I'm just being honest. They have a Nana who, if that piggy bank starts to dwindle, my mom, we call her Nana, or, or thank God for Pam Mills, as we like to say around here, she's going to fill it up. And so my kids are all of a sudden, they're spending all this money and it's my money and they don't spend any of their money. Anybody else have this experience? Yeah. The problem is they, they don't really have a concept of spending money. Because to them, I mean, you know, they find a penny and they think they're rich. They have no idea that what a penny is versus a dollar. They don't understand the difference between a dollar and ten dollars or ten dollars and a hundred. In some ways, man, they, they hit a they hit a hundred dollar bill, they think they're millionaires. Like my kids are walking around putting sunglasses on and putting a cape on, and they're like, Dad, let's go buy. What, what, what are we doing? I got all this money. Like they just, they feel rich, right? And here's the problem with that is um, they, they don't really have a sense of where money comes from, what its value is, how to spend it. Um, and, and here's how I know, because you guys have seen this scene before. You go to the grocery store, because I've seen this play out, right, with my own children. You go to the grocery store and you're filling the grocery cart with all this stuff and of course your kids find something that they want and your explanation to them as to why they can't get it is, well, no, we can't afford that, right? And of course they're like, they look at the grocery cart full of all the snacks and all the stuff and they're like, well, what do you mean? Why, why can't we afford it? We're getting all this stuff. If we're getting all this stuff, why can't we afford it? And listen, I understand that uh, uh, America runs on Dunkin', but those of you who have kids know that kids run on fruit snacks and goldfish and popsicles, yep. right? And, and so we're just filling all this stuff up, and all of a sudden, man, it's like, wow. And they, they just have no sense of money. Now, some of y'all, y'all got some teenagers, and you would think at some point they would start to grow out of this in the teenager realm, but you're wrong. They don't. In fact, I, somehow in their mind, a teenager has considered and really thought through this, and they truly believe that money is unlimited and that you have a pot in the backyard or a tree, and they can go and just, you know, I got this exam, and I got this, you know, uh, sports thing, and this exam, and I got all these things. And you're like, well, I mean, you, you can pay for that, right? It's not until someone really starts to grow up and they go and maybe finish school, they start to get a job and maybe an apartment of their own, and all of a sudden they have bills. And now all of a sudden, the idea and the awareness of money and what it actually is and how to spend it, and holy crap, I didn't realize that I had to actually work for all this. I, it, Nana just gave me all this money, and all of a sudden they just they, they start to gain a little bit of an awareness of money and its value and how to use it. But can we just be real? There's some of us that never actually grew up into that. There's some of us that even still today, we are slave to MasterCard. We think that Visa is, you know, because we hear about people coming into the country or going into another country with a Visa, we think that a Visa is a license to spend, <laughs> right? 
And all of a sudden, we just continue to live this life where we make it, we spend it. We make it, we spend it. And oftentimes, we don't make it, we still spend it. Man, I know it's, uh, this is always fun. Uh, one of my least favorite topics to talk about in the church is money, because what you're feeling right now is what I'm feeling. It's a little, a little quiet. It's a little quiet in here. Um, all week preparing, I knew leading up to this that it would be this feeling. Because it's, listen, here's the reality. It doesn't matter how engaging of an introduction I have, no matter how funny, how much you, you know, I can make fun of my kids. The moment the pastor starts mentioning money in the church, oh, it starts to get real tight and real quiet. But today, here's what I want to I tell you. I know that that's the normal feeling. Um, but today, I believe God's given me a word to lead us through that I think by the time you leave today, that tension will be gone, that weirdness, that awkwardness will be relieved. And I believe this, I truly believe this, that God is going to use today to give some of us some freedom, and he's going to give many of us purpose around our dollars. And I believe that's going to be life-giving. Whereas right now you're sitting and you're like looking next door and you're like, we should have went, we should have went to the lake. <laughs> what are we doing? Can we still slip out? Will he see us? I will, but that's okay. I believe today's going to be life-giving. If you'll lean in, and if you'll listen to what the Spirit wants to speak into your life today. Um, the last few weeks, we've been in a series called The Way of Worship. The heart around this series has been the fact that many of us have been, whether you've been raised in church, you've been around it, that last little bit of time where we were singing, most people, when they think of worship, that's really all they think about. And so we've been walking through this series trying to help learn together and understand together that worship is not just singing. Now, we learned in week one, uh, Pastor Grayson led us through that. He's our worship leader. He was standing up here leading worship today. He helped us understand that both uh, singing in the way of our personal worship and our corporate worship when we gather together is an important way of worship to our God. But we started to learn that that's not the only way in which we can worship. In fact, there are many ways in which God has called us to worship him. And worship is just really this, this uh, fancy church word for that we're just going to give praise and honor and blessing and glory to whom it's deserved. And by the way, that's not me. Uh, that's no one standing on this stage. And uh, shocker, it's not you either. And so we, we don't come here to sing songs to you. We come to lead you in songs to sing to him. But this whole series is around teaching us the ways in which we worship. And after we talked about singing, the, the next week on Mother's Day, Miss Cheryl Bailey, who is in the room today, will y'all help me say thank you to Miss Cheryl Bailey from Mother's Day. It was incredible. Uh, I was blessed by it. I know many of you were. But we talked about prayer and how prayer is a way of worship. And then last week, we leaned in, into the idea that serving and how we use our talent, how we use our gifting, especially inside of the house of God, is an act of worship. And so today, uh, we're going to continue in this series, and I want to talk to you uh, around this idea and, and that this actually is an act of worship, is how you steward what God has given you, and then how you use it. This is not something a, a lot of churches talk about. This is not something that many people are led in. And so I, wanna be, I want this to be life-giving today. You know, there's a, a, a pretty dominant concept in the Word of God that teaches us how God sees money. And before I even preach the message, I want to prove to you that many of you actually already know how God feels about money. I'm going to start to use a verse, and I want you to finish it. Let's see if you actually know God's concept of money, All right? So here's how it goes. I'm going to start it, and you finish it, okay? Here's how it goes. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Now, if you uh, knew that and you didn't say it out loud because you were afraid to be the only one, that's okay. <laughs> but I heard many of you say it. And so here's what I know before I even preach this message, that many of you already understand that God has a concept of how he deals with money. There's a concept that he has, that he holds tight to, that his word teaches, that where our heart is, there our treasure will be also. 
So today, I want to I teach you around that, but I, I want you to understand that around this concept is God calling you in the way that you worship him. Many of us have never thought about how we use our dollars as worship. I pray that this will bless you today because here's what this looks like. When we worship, when we sing, it's worship. When we pray, it's an act of worship. When we serve, it's an act of worship. And oh, by the way, when we steward and when we give, that too is an act of worship. We see it all throughout Scripture. I'm not going to throw these on the screen, uh, but literally starting in Genesis 4, uh, Cain brings an offering of his first fruits and his first portions to God, and God shows favor and blesses that. Uh, Abraham in Genesis 14 brings King Melchizedek, who, by the way, King Melchizedek, when you read Scripture, you should understand that that is Jesus actually showing up in the Old Testament. Abraham, when, his, when the nation of Israel is invaded by the Mesopotamian army, when they kill them and destroy them, he takes a, a tithe or a tenth of that plunder and gives it back to King Melchizedek. Literally, the first time we see the idea of a tithe show up in Scripture. And all the way uh, at the end of the Old Testament in Malachi, Malachi 3, many of you know about this, but God says that his people are robbing him, and they're like, how can we rob God? And he says, because you aren't bringing the tithe and the offering to the storehouse. So all throughout Scripture, especially in the Old Testament, and today I want to lean into the New Testament, but God has a concept around money, and it's the same idea that where your heart is, there your treasure will be also. This idea that the things that your heart truly desires and values, that's where you will invest. That's where you will hold tight to things. And so today, I want to show you a few principles. And if you're taking notes, uh, today's a good day to take notes. If you um, maybe brought your Bible, I hope you did. I want you to join me uh, over in, uh, we're going to look in Matthew chapter 6. If you didn't bring your Bible... Uh, the Home Church app is available. All of the sermon notes and the scripture is loaded up for you. You don't have to do anything. It's just going to be right there. Uh, if you don't have any of those things, totally okay. Uh, we're going to throw the scripture on the screen, and if you're watching online or later, we'll put the scripture at my feet. As you're getting to Matthew chapter, uh, as you're getting to Matthew chapter six, let me just say a few things. Um, today we're going to talk about the idea of stewardship and how you steward things. A steward is someone who's been given something and asked to take care of it. A steward is a caretaker. And just like that song that we sang right before we, I came out to preach, it says uh, that everything that we have, even the breath in our lungs, has been given to us. So at its core, here's what you need to understand. Your life, you are a steward of. You are responsible to take care of your life and everything in it. That means the way that you steward your health, the way that you steward your family, your children, the way that you steward your finances. This is important. But let me say this. This is where we're going today. There is a difference because many of us, rather than stewarding, we like to store up. But I want you to know that there is a difference in stewarding and storing up. I want to lead you through that today. To be clear, Jesus speaks a lot about money. I'm going to show you some of it today. In fact, 11 of the 40 parables that Jesus taught on had to do with money. All right? So if you're thinking, well, man, why is pastor preaching on money? Well, our Savior taught on money pretty often. And I think it's a, it's a huge part of many of our lives. So there are four principles I want to teach you today. If you're taking notes, four principles I want to teach you today on how to steward um, and one of the first times that Jesus speaks about money is in Matthew chapter 6. He's teaching the Sermon on the Mount, and he starts to share some of these concepts. So here we go. Principle number one. How you steward shows why you store. How you steward shows why you store. Okay, let me show you what Jesus says. Matthew 6 and verse 19. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moths and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moths and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. And here is that classic scripture. 
For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Jesus is directly talking about money. And I, and I know sometimes people are like, oh, well, pastor, are we taking this idea of where our treasure is out of context? And is Jesus really talking about money? No, he, he's literally talking about the things of this earth that we have, that we garner. And the only way you get it in this earth is how? Money. money. Jesus is literally talking about it. And here's what he does. He actually ties it not just to earthly things and heavenly things. He, he ties it to eternity. He says that we're not to store up things on this earth right now because it's going to die. It's going to pass away. Someone's going to steal it. It's going to be gone. He says, however, what we really should be chasing after is storing up things in heaven. In fact, he moves our mindset from money to earthly today to heavenly forever. It's a powerful concept. So Jesus is teaching that first principle, right? That first principle of how we steward shows why we store. Now, my kids are, uh, right now, again, there's a little a jar of cash on the counter, and every time they see it, they walk by, they're telling me what they're going to buy with it. They just are. Dad, I'm, I'm going to buy a new uh, Nintendo Switch game. Dad, I'm going to buy some more Pokemon cards. Dad, I, I saw this one toy at Target last time I was in there. I, I'm going to buy that. They start to tell me all of the things in which the money they have stored up, how they're going to spend it. But Jesus is teaching us, and by the way, I know there are some children in the room, teenagers. This is good and healthy. But for us adults who are actually bringing in money and how we're actually store, storing things up, Jesus calls us to take a strong look at it. But there's another principle here that is taught, principle number two, is how you steward shows what you see. How you steward shows what you see. We're going to continue in that line of Scripture, verse 22. Jesus is continuing to teach. He says, the eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? Here's what Jesus is saying. He's saying that our eyes are a reflection of how our body and our mind and our heart is thinking. What we see, if we see things in a healthy way, that shows that there is light in our body. And when we see things in an unhealthy way, that shows that there is darkness in our body. Said very clearly and very plainly, how you see money matters. Because how you see money dictates, whoa, okay, hey -oh. It might be the sweat, Jeremy. I'm sweating a little bit today. <laughs> All right, there we go. Is that better? Yeah. All right. How you see things is going to dictate how you go about living things out, right? Uh, it's this perspective. Um, it, you guys have heard this of, and I could have brought a little glass of water, but it's the glass half full, glass half empty concept, right? When, when we have healthy eyes, when we're living in belief, when we're living in abundance, when we're believe, living in life and in light, we see things in a positive way, a healthy way. We see what could be. And as opposed to that, when we're living in darkness, when we're living in an unhealthy way, we see things in a negative light. We look at, oh man, we've got nothing, Right? There's nothing available to us. It's just darkness. I got, I got nothing for you. But let me just encourage you and remind you of this. However you're looking at things today, the Lord can change your heart and change the inside, which will then change the way you see things. And so today, you might be walking in a place where when you look at the glass, it's for sure half empty. But could I just bring a little bit of light into your life today? Could I just bring a little bit of hope into your body so that your eyes will see things in a healthy way? Because the scripture teaches it very differently. Because in Psalm it says, the Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. The scripture lets us know that he is my fortress and my shield and my defender, that I don't have to worry about anything. It says that now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than I can even dream, ask, or imagine. Friends, I got to tell you, when you're living in light and light is in your body, your eyes will see things in a healthy way and your perspective will have life and light and abundance. That's how it's going to look different. You're going to see it differently when there is light in you. 
how you see things actually does matter. Principle number three. How you steward shows who you serve. I'm going to let that one sink in for a moment. How you steward shows who you serve. Well, you don't have to take my word for it. Jesus continues in this line of teaching, verse 24. He says this, No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to one and despise the other. Oh, Jesus isn't talking about money, Pastor. Oh, oh, he's not? Okay, let's see this. You cannot serve both God and money. (laughs) I'm just going to leave that there for just a moment. Jesus is trying to teach us this principle that how we steward shows who we serve. That at the end of the day, we have a master of our life. And we will either choose to serve God or we will choose to serve money. Well, there's a a difference in that. And and you might be sitting here wondering, well, pastor, how do I know the difference? How, How can I tell the difference in whether I'm serving God or whether I'm serving money? I mean, I think that's a really great question for someone who might be curious. And so in that, here's what I simply want to say to you. It's what I've already taught you. That where your heart is, there your treasure will be also. I think when you start to really look at how you store up and how you spend what you do have, it'll start to lay out a pretty clear understanding for you of where your master is. Here's another way I've heard it said before, is when you look at your bank account, where does most of your money go and in what direction, and you'll have a pretty good idea of where your heart is. And many of us, Listen, me included, I'm going to find that my heart is actually in my gut. Anybody else like to eat out a little too much? Your boy. I'm I'm being honest, yeah. Man, if you were to pull open the Mills bank account, one of the, the primary ways in which you're going to see that we steward dollars is we spend a lot of money on food. Now, there's some of that that's healthy, some of that that's unhealthy. Now, my children, you know, they like to eat, and they do like snacks, They don't eat real food. That's all they do. They just literally eat snacks. We'll put a meal on the table, and they're like, I'm not hungry. And then five minutes later, I want a snack. I want a snack, right? So we eat, and we, but but here's what that also you don't necessarily see is almost every single week, we invite someone to our house, and we cook them a meal. And and frankly, usually, because many of y'all have experienced this, like it it ain't a pot, it ain't a potluck kind of like pot roast. We just feeding everything. I'm usually cooking filet. Uh, yeah, hey, how we get an invite, Pastor? <laughs> Listen, it's just, it's just one of the things in which I, when you come to my house, I want you to have the best. I want to bless you. I want you to feel so at home. I want you to be full when you leave. I want you to have an incredible experience. And so when you show up, like that's what we do. So we, that shows up in our line items for sure. But also, one of the things that you will see is when you start to break apart how we spend dollars, you're going to start to see a lot of ideas and things around home church and the people of home church. It's just what we've given our life to. It's what we've given our life to. It's where our heart is. So that's where our treasure lies as well. What about for you? Who's the master? Who tells you how to spend your dollars? Is it your gut? Is it your bad eyes? Or is it the Lord? Man, I know that's a heavy question. And I know for some, listen, yo, you think it's hard listening to a message like this? Imagine having to prepare and preach it. Yeah, it's been a challenging week. For me to consider how I spend my dollars as well and who the master of my life is. I think that's a healthy thing for us to consider, to ask ourselves, who's the master of our life? Because we can't serve both. I think it goes back to where our heart is. So I'll ask you that question. Where's your heart? Where's your heart? Here's the fourth and last principle. 
How you steward sets up how you can sow. How you steward sets up how you can sow. You see, God's intended purposes for us are clear in his word. Every single time God speaks about money, he's actually giving us direction on not just how we're meant to steward what he's given us, but how we're meant to sow it back out. And there's three things I want to show you. The first one is this. Each and every time, God calls us to steward well so that we can sow, first and foremost, primarily into God's glory. Into His glory. For His purposes. See, here's the thing. God will always use people to fund His purposes in the earth. I don't know if you've seen this or not, but I hadn't seen manna dropping from the sky anytime lately. Anybody else? You know that money tree our kids think? That thing ain't real. There ain't no money tree in the back. The only way that we get anything that we get is through God's hand of provision from one human to another. It just is. I mean, at the end of the day, your job, and it might be a big corporation, but at the end of the day, some human owns it. Some human decides you're going to get paid. And that someone's going to ultimately do the work and you're going to have money show up in your account. Oh, but how'd you get the job? Someone interviewed you. Oh, how'd you find out about the job? Maybe someone told you. Someone you knew actually hired you and brought you in. See, here's what we miss. We miss God's hand of provision throughout every bit of what we've got. The way you have life through another human. See, God's purposes in the earth have always been fulfilled by his hand moving in people's lives every time. Look at this in 2 Corinthians chapter 9. I want you to see this. Paul's teaching the church in Corinth about generosity, about money. And he says this, Remember, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Watch this. Each one of you should give what you have decided where? (laughs) In your heart. To give. So why does the heart matter? Because this is what drives everything. Proverbs says that from the overflow of our heart, the mouth speaks. Jesus and Paul are teaching us that from the overflow of our heart, our hand gives as well. Not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. That goes all the way back to Genesis 4, when Cain brought his first fruits, his best fatty portions. God showed favor to it. Watch this. And God is able to bless you abundantly, so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. Why? do we have to worry about doing good work? What is good work? This is God providing for you to be able to turn and to give and to sow, not sparingly, not reluctantly, but generously into the things that he has purposed for you in the earth. That's how he moves. The second way God has made clear about his way in which he sees money and how it's meant to be used. First is for his purposes. Number two is for God's people. It keeps going. This is in that same line of scripture. Paul's again teaching. As it is written, they have freely scattered their gifts to the poor. Their righteousness endures forever. Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. Again, tying both our heart, practicality, and eternity all all together. Tying them all together. So he's given to God's people, those who are poor, fulfilling God's righteousness in the earth. 
And he's talking about the one who gives the seed, that is God. God gives the seed for us to turn and sow. But there's a promise here. And you will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous sometimes, every now and then. No, on every occasion. On every occasion that you can be generous. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. See, again, God's going to work for his glory through us to his people. Verse 12, this service that you perform is not only supplying the needs of the Lord's people, watch this, but is also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. This is a way of worship, friends. Oh, there's practicality to it for sure. The things in which he gives you, the way you steward it, how you use it to provide for yourself and for your family. But he has a plan and a purpose that not only will the way that you store it, steward it, and sow it, that it will give him glory and he will be able to use it for his people. And then the last one is this, for his glory. Verse 13, because of the service by which you have proved yourselves, others will praise God for the obedience that accompanies your confession of the gospel of Christ and for your generosity in sharing with them and with everyone else and in their prayers for you your excuse me for you their hearts will go out to you because of the surpassing grace God has given you thanks be to God for his indescribable gift Man, I know it's easy to think I earned that. Yo, I, I, I showed up. I went to that job. I'm the one who dug the ditch. I'm the one who uh, welded the, the metal. I'm the one who taught the kids. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But the thing is, is that many of us miss God's hand of provision all along the way to get you where then you could use your gift to earn more and to steward it even better. I know this is heavy, but I, I, I want to leave you with this last thought. Here, here's what I wrote. I'll, I'll tie all these things together. When you're stewarding, how you manage your money is guided by these things. How you store, what you see, who you serve, and what you can sow. When you're stewarding is tied and guided by those things, watch this. The sowing of the seed will always result in God supplying a need. The sowing of the seed that God has already put in your hands when you scatter it, when you sow it, will always supply a need. Simply put, God wants to use you and what he's given you to take care of others, to provide for his purposes in the earth, and to bring himself glory. And it will be good for us. Man, here's, here's what's wild. Um, our culture has ruined the ability for us to have a healthy conversation about money in the church. Because you got these, these guys on TV, these Kenneth Copelands and Creflo Dollars, and y'all know me. Listen, if you come to home church, I don't call out names very often. But man, there, there are these people who are out there proclaiming a prosperity gospel and they're out there filling their pockets and buying planes and all this insanity and building mansions and all that kind of stuff. And, and we have this image that every time the church talks about money, that that's what we're doing. And can I just lovingly tell you that that's insane? Those guys, those guys, I'm telling you, I, I want to be very careful here. They are condemning themselves. The way that they steward what God puts in their hands is disgusting. And it gives a black eye to the rest of the church. And so anytime a pastor stands up here and tries to teach you and lead you in the way that God teaches about money, inevitably it gets tight, like we talked about earlier. It gets all weird because that's what we have in mind. But friends, can I, can I just tell you, like, here's the life-giving part, which is this, is that the reality is, is that we all deal with money. It's how we go about our lives. It just is. You don't think our Lord knew that? Which is why he spoke so clearly and so often about money. That we wouldn't have to have confusion, that we would be clear. And, and I just want to say this. 
Not once did I talk to you about a tithe or an offering to home church. It's not what I'm after today. Not once did I, I told you about my heart and my family, but not once did I say, hey, here's a campaign you can give to or any of that stuff. At the end of the day, my heart today was to give life to you, to challenge you with what Jesus teaches about how you steward what he puts in your hand. That's what I want for you today. Now, I do have something I want to ask from you. It's one thing. If you're struggling in this area, we want to help you. We want to help you. Um, I, I want to do this. I, I, I want you to know, uh, I want to give you my personal email address. And if this is an area you're struggling in, maybe it's not because you've, it doesn't matter why. But if you're struggling financially, here's what I want to tell you. God has been generous to this house. And I believe God will continue to be generous to this house. And I want to speak on behalf of our elders. We've been planning and we know that there's a lot happening in the earth, that the culture and the climate are, are difficult, and that some of you guys are struggling. Here's what I want to tell you. We want to help you. We're not going to publicize it. We're not going to put your picture on a screen. No one's going to know. But quietly inside of the house, God has provided for us, and we want to take care of you, God's people. If there is a need that you have, we want to help you meet it. So we have something for you today, but it's going to take something from you. It's going to take your willingness to be humble and simply ask. But God's already provided for you. Here's what I also know, that God is using people in this house, and if there's a need that we can't meet, I got five or six people that I know that I can look at right now, and I'm not going to look at you, don't worry. I can run to in this room and say, we have a need, will you help us meet it? And the answer will be yes, without question. Maybe you're doing okay, but this conviction over how you steward has challenged you today. I also want you to reach out to me, because what we want to do is we want to provide for you uh, Dave Ramsey's Financial Peace University. We want to give it to you. It's like $100 a course. We want to bless you with it. We want to give it to you. And, and here's why. Because it changed my life. Katie and I, along our journey, we went through it. It changed our life. We got debt free. We were able to understand God's way of stewardship. And man, it's changed the way that we live our life. I want that for you. Our church wants that for you. And so normally when a church stands up here and they, they preach about money and generosity, the next thing that's coming is an ask. Come on, give to this. Not today. Today, the only ask I have of you is if you have need, make it known to me and we'll provide. Not we. God will provide for you. If you need help to figure it out, reach out. We want to come alongside of you and help. Here's the promise that I believe Scripture makes throughout the way, is that Jesus is coming back. And so, no matter what you're walking through today, there's a promise that at the end, all things will get better. And when we lean in and we, we rely on Jesus to be our provision, to provide for us, he's always going to do those things. He's going to take care of us. And so here's what I want to invite you to do. We're going to ask you to stand to your feet. I want to say a few things. Number one is this. I love you. One of the greatest honors of my life is to pastor this church. I am grateful of how God is provided for this house. And so, to those of you who have given along the way to home church, I say thank you. Man, you have allowed God to use you to provide. The next thing I want to say is this. If you have a need, God sent me today to tell you that through the hand of God, he will provide for you. And he wants to use this house to do it. All it takes is for you to ask. No one will know. Me, 
and our four elders, that will be it. Just so you know, that's not something new to us. Man, there are people in the room, if, if, if they could, they would testify today to you that we've done this for them already. We've provided in areas of need. We'll continue to do that. I'm going to make it really clear. We'll put it on our social media stuff as well. My email is my name. It's real easy. Kenny at myhomechurch.cc. <laughs> real easy. Kenny at myhomechurch.cc. You just send me an email, and I'll follow up, and we'll bless you. The last thing is this. I pray that God will use his word to challenge you on how you steward what he's putting in your hands. That you'll have your eyes opened in a healthy way to see and live out in light. And that on every occasion, when he gives you the ability, you will give generously to whatever he puts in front of you. Because God wants to use you for his purposes as well. I want to pray over you, and then we're going to sing. Father, I say thank you. In the name of Jesus, you're good to us, Father. You've provided immensely, abundantly, more than we could ask or imagine. And so, God, I say thank you. On behalf of Home Church, I say thank you, God, for providing for us. God, I say thank you in advance for what you're going to do in the lives of people over these next days and weeks. As a need arises, God, thank you for already providing it. And God, if there's a way that we could steward better in our own lives, God, would you make that clear in our hearts and in our lives today, right now? <clears throat> God, I pray that wherever people are today, that you would meet them and that today wouldn't just be a talk about generosity, but God, more than anything, they would see and know your gracious love poured out for them. The fact that you were the first giver, you gave your son Jesus to us to pay the price for our sin, that we can be reconciled to you, God. You've always been a giver. Your heart has always been generosity. You gave us the best gift of all, your son Jesus. His blood washes our sin away, forgives us, and makes us right with you. So God, if there's anyone under the sound of my voice today who needs to be made right with you, that they would receive your son Jesus right now, that they would believe on him, they would confess that, they would turn from their sin, and God, that they would walk in your gracious, generous, kind love and forgiveness. And God, we know that as we journey this life, the closer we get to you, oh, it gets better and sweeter. So, Father, draw near to us today. Be kind to us today. Make yourself known to us today. And we'll sing and we'll praise because it's only going to get better. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, come on, church. Hey, we're going to sing about that. We're going to sing that at the end of days, man, it's only going to get better. Our time with him only gets better. It gets sweeter. Come on, let's sing this together. Thank you for taking the time to enjoy this message from home church. We hope that God used today's message to encourage you and to challenge you as you heard the teaching of his word. Listen, if there's anything in today's message that spoke to you, or if you asked Jesus into your life today, let us know. We would love to celebrate with you. Simply send us an email at hello at myhomechurch.cc and let us know that you made that decision today. Also, if today's message uh, impacted your life, uh, you can take a step forward and a step into supporting the ministry of Home Church by giving online right now at myhomechurch.cc. Again, thank you for watching today's message. Make sure you like and subscribe so that you get all of the fresh content from Home Church.